Hi, my name is Juan Du. I'm pleased to present our work, DH3D, Deep Hierarchical 3D Descriptors for Robust Large-Scale Six-Stop Relocalization, which is done together with Rui Wang and Daniel Kremus. In autonomous driving, relocalization within a global 3D map is a critical functionality. Specifically, we aim at estimating an accurate six-stop pose without using prior position information. A lot of effort has been put into tackling the problem using 2D image descriptors. However, image-based methods can become unreliable in the presence of strong illumination changes or viewpoint variations, which commonly occur in outdoor environments. In contrast to that, as shown here, 3D point clouds do not suffer from such issues, showing great potential to provide robust relocalization. In this work, we present a data-driven hierarchical 3D descriptor, which allows us to perform both place recognition and pose refinement. This is an overview of our relocalization pipeline. The network first extracts 3D local features, and the detector selects key points from the feature map. The global descriptor is then aggregated from the local ones with an effective attention mechanism. During inference, a core search retrieves 3D submap candidates using the global descriptor. Then the refined 6 DOF pose is obtained by matching the local features. To emphasize the key concept of our method, note that our global descriptor assembler is designed to reuse the extracted local features. The idea behind is that both local and global descriptors depend on the same low-level geometric information. In this way, the assembler can take advantage of the informative local features and produce more discriminative global ones. Also, local and global descriptors can be inferred in one single forward pass, which brings runtime benefits in practical applications. Next, we will explain the architecture of each module following the workflow. The local descriptor encoder takes point clouds as input and outputs the pointwise local descriptors. We integrate the spatial information at two levels. The second level is employed to encode the structure from a larger receptive field than the first one. To make the descriptors more discriminative, we adopt two special operations here, namely flex convolution and squeeze and excitation block. Flex convolution is employed to model the interaction among other points in Euclidean space. To explain the idea of flex convolution, let's assume we have a 3D point and its carried feature function. We want to model the relations between the point and its neighbors. Flex convolution is a generalization of the conventional convolution. The network learns the tradable parameters theta, and the contribution of each point depends on the dot product of theta and its relative distance to the center plus a learnable bias. Therefore, it can be considered as a linear approximation of the traditional filter kernel, which uses the local information explicitly. While FlexCom models spatial connectivity patterns, SE blocks are further used to model the interactions between the channels in the feature space. More specifically, for n unordered points with a length of their feature as C, the squeeze operation first uses a global average pooling to aggregate the input across spatial dimensions. In the excitation step, the globally pooled feature is consumed by fully connected layers to learn a nonlinear relationship between the channels. In the end, the learned channel activations are used to rescale the input across channels. In our method, the key point selection comes after descriptor extraction. The detector consumes the pointwise local features. After a series of four one-by-one -one convolution layers and a sigmoid activation, it outputs a key point saliency map. This describe and detect approach is helpful for the detector to employ high-level information to learn the discriminativeness of the features. To train the local part of our model, we use a Siamese structure. We generate training pairs by applying arbitrary rotations around the upright axis to the point clouds. 
and the detector and the descriptor are jointly trained by using two separate loss terms. For the descriptor loss, we adopt n tuple loss to pull positive pairs close and keep enough distance between negative pairs. As for the detector loss, since there is no standard definition of a key point for outdoor point clouds, we train the model in an unsupervised manner. To do this, we propose a new metric called average successful rate. The value of AR is computed to reflect the quality of descriptor matching and the detection loss is formulated as shown here, where kappa is a hyperparameter indicating the minimum expected AR per key point. To minimize the detector loss, the network should predict the score to be close to zero if AR is less than kappa, and to be near to one conversely. As mentioned before, we propose to reuse the local descriptors for global feature assembling. For this purpose, two FlexCom layers First, project the local features to a higher dimension for more retrieval-relevant encoding. The attention predictor takes these features and outputs a per-point attention map, which is followed by a net flat layer to generate a compact global vector. To train the global part of the model, we use the same lazy quadruplet loss as used in point net flat. Next, we will show some experimental results of our method. We first evaluate our global descriptor for the task of point cloud retrieval. Given a point cloud as a query, we compare its global descriptor against the database. The k-nearest neighbors are returned as the output of this retrieval. We can observe that despite the occlusion and rotation appearing in the query point cloud, our method can still perform the retrieval task successfully. We compare our method against two state-of-the-art approaches. Here we show two models of our method, with different numbers of local features being used to compute the global descriptors. From the recall curves of the top 25 retrieval matches, both of our models outperform the other two approaches consistently. We also specifically evaluate the average recall at top 1% and the best match. Again, our approach outperforms the other methods. The second subtask is the point cloud registration based on local descriptor matching. Here we demonstrate some examples of testing pairs. The quantitative results are shown in this table. Compared to other methods, our approach achieves the highest registration success rate and the number of required iterations is significantly lower than all of the other combinations. Please refer to our paper for the comparison with more methods. Our 3D descriptor not only works on LiDAR point clouds, but also can handle other 3D data generated by different sensors. For example, direct visual scan methods can produce semi-dense 3D reconstructions from images. In this experiment, we use Daryl DSO to generate point clouds from eight traversals of Oxford robot car. Please note that to test the generalization capability, our model used here is not fine-tuned. As shown in the table, our approach achieves the best rotation error and success rate and the second best translation error among all the evaluated methods. Moreover, when compared to the results in the previous table, it can be noticed that most methods show significant inferior performances. However, our method is still able to achieve a favorable performance, showing the least degree of degeneracy. Here we show some qualitative results. The testing set covers a wide range of daytime, including night, dawn, and noon. The sequences also cover changes of weather, season, and varying scene layout caused by construction. As can be seen from the figures, the produced 3D reconstructions can provide more stable geometric structures and therefore are less affected by image appearance changes. So, our 3D descriptor can be helpful for loop closure and relocalization for visual slam methods. Please visit our project page for code and other materials. Thank you.